Highly emotional people aren't just slaves to their own feelings, but beholden to those who trigger them. Now, today I got a question from an angry viewer who says, Elliot, I'm more angry lately when it comes to watching the blatant stupidity of other people. He says, everywhere he looks, it seems like he's surrounded by stupidity. Yesterday he was driving and he says to himself, look at all these dumbasses who are texting and driving. Don't they know that they're putting other people in danger? And he goes on to say that since I've had children, I am now becoming more angry and frustrated with the type of idiocy and widespread ignorance that he sees in the world. Well, I would begin by saying you are the problem. You know, when I first read your question, I thought about the mass Karens that were trying to save everybody by being angry and belligerent towards those who chose not to wear the mask. Now, these people have a righteous indignation about them. You call them virtue signalers. They get really angry about things that they think other people should be doing. And if you don't bend to their will, then you are an evil person. They, ha they take the moral high ground. I'm trying to save grandma, and you refuse to do the things that I think will save grandma. Now, I'm not saying that people who drive and text are okay in my book. I understand. But the fact that you take on the emotional angst that's associated with it means that, that person lives rent-free in your head. You're responsible for your feelings. By getting angry, you do nothing more than bring more anger into the world. Have you ever heard that all these wars against things create more wars? The war against drugs creates more drugs. The war against terrorism creates more terrorism. Anytime we take the position of trying to fight something, we in, we're embroiled in a fight. They say, be careful that you don't become like your enemy. Whenever you fight an enemy, you become more like that enemy. And I'm sure you don't want to be like the people that you see that are pissing you off, but you are operating out of a low vibration when you allow those people who may be also of low vibration, dumb people, ignorant people, widespread stupidity, you're right there in the boat with them. In fact, you jumped into the boat with them in order to be angry. Not only that, but now, I don't know how long it was that you've been watching this go on, but these people, they rule you now. They control you. Anytime anybody can manipulate your feelings, you're totally off base on grounded and they are your puppet string pullers. There's a really good story about a Japanese samurai guy. I don't know what his name is, but it was some weird Japanese name. He was a world renowned slasher and, and killer with a sword, samurai. And he had such dignity that when people would just approach him for a battle, I challenge you to a duel. He would say, no, I'm not getting involved with that. I'm not going to allow you to prove yourself by using me as an example. So he'd go about his day and nobody, you know, they would bother him, but he'd say, no, 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 I'm not fighting with you, I'm not fighting with you, I'm not fighting with you. Well, one day, another samurai dude comes up to him and says, I challenge you to a duel. And finally, our friend says, okay, you know what? Let's do this. And he goes to grab his sword and before he can even pull out his sword, his challenger spits in his face. Our hero, the OG samurai warrior, then takes his hands off the sword and says, you know what, forget it, and walks away. Now, the moral that is drawn from that story is that he agreed never to do anything out of a state of anger. He was cool, he was calm, he was ready to battle with this guy. But because anger was there, he said no. Because I'm not, every action, how about this? Every action is measured by the sentiment from which it proceeds, Ralph Waldo Emerson. So if you approach anything that you do with an unresourceful emotion, everything that you're gonna do is gonna be colored by that unresourceful emotion. So what do you do about all the stupid, ignorant people that are texting and driving, that making you, driving you insane, Mass Karen? The only thing you have control over is yourself. And when it comes to having control over yourself, really the only thing that you have control over are your thoughts. And then your thoughts cascade into feelings and then become reality. You don't even have control over your own physical body. 
If you remember that book, uh, Man's Search for Meaning, my Holocaust survivor, can't remember his name. He was imprisoned, but he never allowed himself to be captivated mentally by his oppressor. He remained free in his own mind and in his own heart because he chose his own thoughts. He never let his enemy pervade his mind. Like I think Gandhi says, you can imprison my body, but you cannot imprison my mind. You have a free fucking body and you're letting people imprison your mind. So you need to learn how to detach. You see stupid people and you know what you can do that may bring more resourcefulness and joy and happiness and less stupidity into the world? Bless their heart. Bless his heart. I pray that that person overcomes their stupidity. I pray that they will make a better decision. Just like how I said that the mental then becomes physical, prayer is a way to change your environment. But we think that we need to pick up our sword. We think that we need to yell and rant and scream and become belligerent towards people who don't do the things that we want. You can't change them. You really can't change anything physically. All you can do, in fact, the best you can do is approach it with a mind of groundedness and responsibility. Change your mind in order to change your experience with stupid people. Done.